Hi, so today I thought I'd show you how to, to do some of these tiled little round map designs or border designs. We're going to be doing it in Inkscape and we're going to be using the tiled clone effect with rotate. So I'm going to clear this and just jump right in. So I'm in Inkscape. I'm on a nice blank new page. I'm going to start using the stars and polygon icon. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to make sure that I've got the stars selected here. And I'm going to change the corners to five. I'm not worried about any of the other settings at the moment. And I'm just going to left click and drag out a couple of little stars. And I'm just going to make them various sizes and not too close to each other or at least not touching. Okay, so I'm just starting off with three. I'm going to left click and drag an imaginary box around all three so they're all selected. And I'm going to go to path union and you have to do this. Then while these are all still selected, I'm going to left click once and you can see the handles have turned into the rotate handles. But what we're after is this little tiny cross in the middle. I'll just zoom in and see if you can see it a little bit better. When I click on it, can you see this cross here? And it's this cross that we want. So I'm going to zoom out. And when you get oh, when you hover over it, it, it usually changes colour to red, which I don't think you can see on the screen. I'm going to hold the control key down on my keyboard. And while I'm holding that down, I'm going to drag this little cross down. Now, I can't give you exact measurements or anything on this. I'm just going to show you the rotate and then leave it up to you to play with it. So now I've let go and you can see I've moved this down here. While this is all still selected we're going to go to edit, down to clone and then take the sub menu to create tiled clones and this will open up this box and before you do anything I want you to hit the reset button and that just sets all the default settings back because we don't know what settings you've got in yours. So if we all start from the same starting point, hopefully if you're following the tutorial, it should work out. So we've got our shape here, which we've done path union on. We've found the cross in the middle and moved it down. And then we've gone to edit, clone and create tiled clones. Symmetry you leave at P1, simple translation. Shift you need to click on and because we're doing a circle you always need to have under shift x column minus 100. So I'm going to highlight this box and just type minus 100 and click enter. And then down here you need to be on rows and columns. It's always one in this first box for rows and then in this box it can be anything you like. So to start with, I'm going to make this 10. So I'm just going to type 10 and hit enter on my keyboard. Now, whatever number you put in here determines what you then put now up here on the rotation tab. So we're clicking on rotation and we've got 10 down here. A circle is 360 degrees and because we've got 10 rotated shapes, we need to divide 360 by 10. And that's the figure that we put up here, which is 36 degrees, and we hit enter. Then while this is all still selected, we can leave this here. And all as we do, we click on the create button. And if you watch the screen and see what happens, we've instantly created ourselves a tiled clone of this first section that we've chosen. Now, if you're happy with that placement, that's fine. If you want to make changes while this first one is still selected because that's a clone, the originals underneath it and all these are clones of our first group. You can come back to this cross and if you can see on the screen it's turned red and you can take it back up a little bit and then hit create again and that will bring them nearer or you can bring it down and click create again and that will move them further apart. So that bit you need to play with. I'm going to take it up just a little bit for now and hit create. So I'm happy with that placement. Now you can't do anything at all with this 
until you delete this one that's highlighted. Once you've deleted that, you can't go back and change this. So you have to make sure you're completely happy with it. So while this is selected, you hit delete on your keyboard. Then you just drag an imaginary box around all of those and you go path union. Okay. And that's made them one group. Now you could draw a box a square box. I'll just select that and change the colour so you can see what's happening and I'm going to send, you come up here to this icon and send that to the back and then if I drag an imaginary box around both, just move this out of the way for a minute, go to the align icon and centre them horizontally and vertically. While they're all still selected you can do path difference or path combined. It doesn't seem to matter which one of those two options you choose doing this. Um, and then you've got yourself a mat. And then obviously you could use that as a stencil or you could use that as a topper for a card or you could draw yourself another square. I'll just select that and do it in a different colour and send that to the back. And then that could be like a matting layer and you'd see the colour through. So that's one way. I'm just going to delete those. You could do it with um, circles. I'm going to hold my control key down, drag out a circle, and I'm going to drag out another one a little bit bigger and another one a little bit bigger. I'm going to select them all and I'm going to align them all centrally. While they're all nicely centred, I'm going to go path union because you have to do that step. Click on it once to get the cross again. Drag it down, holding the control key on your keyboard to keep it in a straight line. While this box is still open, if this box wasn't open, I'll close it down. If it wasn't open, just to remind you, it's edit, clone, create tile clones. This time I'm going to change the number here to 12. So because I've now changed that to 12, I've got to go to the rotation tab and 360 divided by 12 is 30. So I'm going to type 30 in here and hit enter on my keyboard and click create and you get that effect. And if you're happy with that, you delete the one that's highlighted, drag an imaginary box around all those go path union and then they become one group then I'm going to drag a circle out holding the control key down on my keyboard I'm just going to select it and change it to a different colour the colour doesn't matter and it doesn't affect the cutting I'm only doing that so you can see it on screen while the circle's selected I'm going to hit that icon to send it to the back then I'm going to drag a box around both I'm going to go to align Move this out of the way again, align centrally and vertically and while everything's selected, path combine. You get the same effect, it doesn't matter. And that's another mat. And then again, once it's selected, if you hold the control key down, you can resize it however you want. You can drag out another circle, select it, send it to the back, align them. And then you've got another mat with a cutout layer on top. So that's another one. I'm just going to get rid of that circle because we don't really need it. I'm going to resize this down. Okay, so that's another one. You can do it with fonts. So we'll go to our font and we'll come up here and we'll type Seru. And we'll choose Seru's Flower Ding, which is a ding that I used recently with the cat design. While that's selected, I'm going to click once on my page and I'm going to use a capital letter A, which gives us a flower. I'm going to hold the control key down and resize it. While it's reselected, because it's a font or a dingbat font, we have to straight away go path union or else we won't be able to open that in canvas. But path union is part of this effect anyway, so that kind of helps us here. Click once on it, see sorry, click once, right click and duplicate and then I'm going to hold the control key down and make that smaller 
and then while that one's selected right click and duplicate and bring the duplicate away drag an imaginary box around all three path union again to make them one and then click on it once to expose the cross hold the control key down bring the cross down bring the clones box back in we'll try eight this time so we'll type in eight and because we've changed the number of columns on rotation we have to change this or else it won't work so 360 divided by 8 is 45 so we've got to type 45 and the angle in there and click create again if you're happy with that you can delete this if you're not you can highlight the, the cross in the middle and hold the control key down and move it up click create again it brings them nearer if that's the design I'm looking for, while this clone is selected, I can delete it, drag an imaginary box around everything, do path union. I'll just move that out of the way. I'll draw myself another circle. Select the circle, send it to the back so it's behind there. It's not big enough, so I'll drag it out a bit bigger. Select both my pink circle and my black flowers. Come to my align tab and align them centrally and vertically. And while they're both selected, path combine it path difference or combine, it doesn't matter. And there's another one. Okay, so I'm just going to hold my control key down and resize that. Now, say you want to do a border. So will you We'll use Sarus for now because we're still on that. I'm going to type a capital letter A, I'm going to select it, I'm going to do path union, I'm going to hold the control key down and resize it, then right click and duplicate, drag my duplicate off, right click and duplicate, and this one I'll make a little bit smaller, bring it in, drag an imaginary box around all three. And go path union now this time we're going to change some of our settings here because we want these in a straight line not in a circle so symmetry p1 simple translation remains the same shift we can take that back down to zero you only need minus 100 if you're working in a circle so we'll make that zero and rotation we can take back down to zero again because we're not rotating and we'll leave the the column on eight and we'll click create and that's given us a row of eight and if we're happy with that while this one's selected we must delete it we can't do anything with them unless we delete that clone drag an imaginary box around all of those go path union and that's made us a group if you like and we'll come to our rectangle box and we'll drag out a rectangle while it's selected, we'll send it to the back just so we can see the design. And again, we can drag an imaginary box around both, so they're both selected, center them horizontally and vertically, and then go back to path and combine, and we've made ourselves a border. So I hope you found that helpful. Obviously, you could take this further um, I'm just, as I say, showing you the basics of using the clone and edit create tile clone function. Just going to resize this one down. And then what I'm going to do now, I'm going to save this on my desktop, this file. So file, save as, just going to call it test and put it on my desktop and click save. I'll just minimise this down, I won't completely close it in case the file doesn't open in Canvas. I've come into Canvas, got um, a blank page, I'm going to go to Project, Import SVG, Test SVG is the file I've just named on my desktop, there it is. Choose, click OK and hopefully it will open now in Canvas. And then all you need to do is, there it is, there are your cutting files. Obviously you can resize them if you like, you just give it a name, I'll just call this one test again for now and save it now here in Canvas.
and then once it's saved and it's told us it's saved all you should need to do then is click on the download button wait for it to give you the file name and it's now given us a scan and cut file extension rather than the SVG extension which was the file we created in Inkscape. You right click on the name, you choose download link file as. If you've got a USB stick plugged in on your machine you find it here, if not I've not, I'm just going to put this on my desktop, there's the name and click save and then that will save that file onto my desktop Next time I plug my USB stick in, I can drag that onto my USB stick and it's ready for when I want to then use within the scan and cut machine. So I hope you found that helpful. Please like, share and subscribe and leave me any questions or comments below. And I'll see you in the next video, which should be um, making our own nested shapes. Thank you.